think the, the key thing, what we've learned from the, the pandemic in terms of kind of political and social responses is the importance of representation within those processes for making decisions, determining resources and so on. Because early on in the pandemic, there was a considerable lack of attention given to disabled people, our organizations, our representatives, and I use that term loosely, in a, recognizing that their contribution and their role in saying, these are the things that matter, these are the things that need to be prioritized. And it wasn't through lack of trying. You know, we have the evidence that says disabled people's organizations, they struggled to get access to ministers, decision makers. The committees that were established internally within governments, externally, they didn't have representation of disabled people coming from a political position. And I, what I mean by that is, it's very easy to fall into the trap of thinking about disability and disablement as an individual medicalized problem, which requires a medicalized response. That's the dominant narrative that, that comes out of social and political configurations within society. That's why the response was focused on what's the value and the worth of saving this individual's life based on their impairment and health conditions. If you flip that and you say that disability is primarily a political issue, it's disability is the production of restrictions imposed upon you, which are unnecessary, and they're unnecessary because you can reorganize society to, to eradicate and destroy those restrictions. The problem is that we never had those voices in those core influential decisions. We were struggling to have our voices heard. And when there was discussion about disability, it, was, it felt trapped into an individual and medicalized narrative. So for me, there was, there was this disconnect between our representation, our priorities, our issues, and those who were making the decisions.